What are you doing, Shandik? Of course. <laughs> Purple tree collared in the box robot with flushable toilet wipes. Hi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Moses from Zatar Gardens. Um, it's the evening today. I decided to uh, um, do the spring tour for 2018. Uh, early spring um, Last one I did last year. I just went through and I'm gonna mimic the same thing this year I'm gonna go through talk about each I'm gonna name each plant walking briskly through the garden and if there's Interesting plants that I think are interesting or that I love or are important to me or if there's new plantings I'll talk about them new plantings from last year uh, about a year ago so uh, let's begin. So this is the same thing right here, guamuchio from last year. Uh, tamarind, Indian tamarind, or in Arabic, or in Armenian, I think it's Arabic, but uh, tamarindin. It's a uh, pink, it looks like pink popcorn. It t I've tasted it, it tastes like raisin and dates mixed, uh, defoliated from the hard freeze, but it's okay, it's coming back. I'm putting it in a pot because it's an invasive. I don't need that problem. This is a new planting of an Espelade 4-in-1 apple, Honey Crisp, uh, Gala Fuji, which I already have a Fuji, but it came with it, and a Yellow Transparent, a very early ripening apple. It's said to ripen here in Central California, end of May, beginning June. Okay, so we have Echinaceas coming back. We have Albertina Olive that I cut back severely every year and let it regrow because I really want it to open up. I want a six foot tall olive right here. And uh, that fits the bill. Uh, I have borage that I've never planted before so I'm hoping it's gonna do really well. And there's marigold from last year in there. My Barbados cherry or acerola cherry tree. Uh, you can see some growth happening over there. This is from the result of the hard freeze we had here in California just recently. Uh, but it'll grow back because underneath all these branch tips that you see is little green leaves coming out. So it's gonna grow back. I pruned it heavily, heavily. This is a very old plant. I think it's almost five years old now. I prune it heavily every year to produce like, kind of like a crepe myrtle, the the one that doesn't grow into the tree, the other bush type one. Um, prune it back heavily to let it grow back. So it grows to like maybe four or five feet high and produces a su sweet, but more of an acid type cherry. That's the Barbados cherries. French tarragon coming back right over there. Hyssop, a uh, form of za'atar, but uh, you could put hyssop. When you read some za'atar ingredients, the mix, they sometimes use that, but it's too pungent to use. I, don't, I just like it because of the, the blue flowers are amazing. Okay, I have three blueberry plants here. This is... Sunshine blue, sunshine blue, and misty. They're coming back from that hard freeze. This this really took a beating if you want to look up close. But the other blueberries didn't don't look that bad. The late hard freeze that we had. Uh, this is my favorite. This is a new planting. Well, not new, but com uh, from last year. I planted this somewhere around summer of last year. I don't, I'm going to be honest with you, I do not like sage. I think it's too pungent. Uh, I do see its purpose and its use in the kitchen, but I just think it's too pungent, except for this sage. If you don't have Greek sage, you want to plant it. This smells like sage, not as pungent, but sweet smelling, and is next to the Mars room. This is a celestial fig here. This is known as the sugar fig, I believe. Uh, it was in that pot over there, but we'll, we got to loop around, and uh, this is going to be a long video if I don't do a lot of edits here. Let's see, there's a purple fig by the way. Uh, this is uh, the plant that everybody keeps. I just recently, somebody else asked for some seeds and wanna buy it and you know, I can't, I'm not uh, a seed company. I'm not, I, I can't take time out of my day to do those type of things. It's not enough money for me to do it. Uh, this plant here is, the, everybody on the internet wants it. If you look on the internet, uh, not many people have videos. I'm the only one with the videos with images 
articles on this plant, it's Timbra spicata or spike thyme. It's a very ancient herb. It was even found in re reports that I found through the internet, uh, articles that said that it was found in the tomb of Tutankhamun, this plant here. It's a form of za'atar. You usually make it with salad. You don't make a za'atar mix with this. But uh, it is extremely, extremely delicious. Uh, best tasting zot that I have variety and I, I have about maybe about 50 plants I started with one and you're looking at it right there from a from a passed down seeds and cuttings Okay, I have parsley here parsley Curly curly which are beautiful plants by the way flat flat and so forth parsley here parsley over there and I have more parsley growing in the in pots and I've been asked how come I grow so much parsley you know, you have so you have not much, not the most space in the world. How come you're growing so much parsley? There's one word, pronounced two or maybe more ways, but two ways: tabule, tabuli. I love tabule. If you guys don't know what it is, I'll put a the word in the description so you can look it on you Google. I'll actually probably do a video later on on my own special recipe I make with tabule from my garden, and I mix a little bit of zatar in there too, so it tastes like zatar salad. Uh, but I love tabule or tabuli, however you want to say it. This is two Greek oreganos, another type of za'atar plant right here. Um, the great plant. Um, they call this in Arabic za'atar akhtar, uh, green thyme. My aronia berry um, or chokeberry. It's right over here, um, said to have the highest level of antioxidant in any type of food. I don't know if it's just berry, but berries are known to have the most antioxidants. But any type of uh, berry, this has the most antioxidants. I think three or four or five times more than blueberries. You got to do your own research on that, but aronia berry. It's very delicious and beautiful too. Beautiful fall color leaves as well. I love it. So there's some sage here. I don't like sage, just didn't want to throw it away. They bought some at Whole Foods and I had cuttings, you know, because you could buy cuttings from Whole Foods in a bunch. So I planted them, the rest in the ground and they grew. This is a Granny Smith apple. There's a lot of grafts on here. And this tree is a Fuji and it has a lot of grafts on it as well. There's some summer savory that has lasted the frost right here. This is a form of za'atar. Uh, they use this to make salad with as well delicious actually this is extremely delicious I have a lot of seeds I'm a plant all this whole row is 10 crowns of UC 157 f1 asparagus this asparagus was planted one year and two months ago um, and it I fertilized with seaweed not extract as well but pure seaweed from the ocean I fertilized the ground last year and it produced more than a pencil thick spear of asparagus um, all the way up to Halloween on its first year of growth in the ground and you know you could tell how thick they are now compared to my thumb so great great performer great performer yeah, look how it's amazing and it tastes sweet and when you pull it out of the ground I don't cut it I, I grab it from the base and I pull from the crown my belief is it spurs new growth I used to cut and saw some crowns not grow back so fast and others I pulled directly from the crown like a big huge white tip at the end of it and it would spur new growth so I started pulling and pulling and pulling and all the way up to Halloween I have asparagus not just two months in the spring okay this is spinach my failed attempt at spinach I was told that spinach doesn't do well in gardens uh, I guess it doesn't in my I'm not gonna try again I don't love it that much I have longevity spinach and Okinawa spinach and other things. I'll get perpe perpetual spinach next year. Or this year, excuse me. This is winter savory. Another form of uh, za'atar. More pungent than its cousin, the summer savory, which is over there. One plant. There's arugula, another summer savory over there. Some violas to just brighten up the garden. God, I'm already at eight minutes. <laughs> and I'm not even, I don't know, what... 15, 20 feet. Okay, this is some thyme. Okay, I gotta go a little faster. This is some thyme from Whole Foods. This is chives, garlic, gigantic, 
Lord Giant and Common. This is caraway time, the fastest growing time in the world, supposedly. This is radishes that just keep on growing. We grow it for the leaves. We eat the leaves of the radish. We don't eat the radish itself. This is sea buckthorn or sea berries. Not many people grow this, but um, I chose to grow it because it has uh, reported 190 different nutrition um, nutrients, excuse me, vitamins and minerals. 190 different. That's within its leaves and its berries, not just one or the other. So this is two females. This is a star of Altai. Orange energy, and there's the male pollinator. And they do grow out. I mean, some of them, they are a little bit invasive, but not that crazy. Some of the sea berries came up from over there, so I already pulled some out there already over here, but that's okay. There's uh, my <coughs> nopales or nopal prickly pear cactus that just keeps on growing and doesn't give me fruit. So if there's any suggestions on how to produce prickly pear cactus or, you know, the tunas, tuna, I believe what they call it, call it uh, let me know because I, I'm tired of it. It just keeps growing and growing and growing and I have to keep pruning and pruning and pruning. Uh, there's Lovage over here. Uh, let's see. Done. There are more timorous spicatas around the base of this dappled dandy pluot. This dappled dandy pluot, hold on, let me walk over here. I prune it half a tree. See, th this half is all gone, only this half is present. The reason why is because I want to be able to walk. I don't want this much growth in my way of walking to the side of the garage. So I pruned it in half. Uh, kumquat right here. My son's favorite. <clears throat> this is a zatad right here. Hard freeze, burnt it back a bit, but it's still well alive. This would be a very beautiful if it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't, um, this is, if I didn't mention, I forgot, Oregonum Syriacum, the name, and it's or Syrian Oregano. But um, this is from the heart freeze that we had here in California. But it's okay. You see right here, it's starting to grow back. In one week to two weeks, this is all going to flush out. This is a plant you really can't kill in zone 9B and above. Zone 9A and below, well, probably 8B and below. You probably can't really grow it in the ground outside. Okay, Thompson grape over here, which I believe it came from my, it's a very significant, this and my pomegranate that I pruned into a tree. That's my most popular video on my channel, how it's fanned out, beautiful, more of an ornamental than for eating, and so is this grape. This came from my grandmother's humongous, like 20 year old grape plant or more years, I don't know. The base of that plant looks like a tree. This is cuttings from that tree, from that, well, I guess it's a tree from that grape plant. She passed away quite some time ago and about two to three weeks after she passed away, her sister, my great aunt, passed away. And they were very avid gardeners that taught me everything when I was young, especially my grandmother. Um, this is a pomegranate, a root cutting from her backyard. I don't know the variety, but it's it's uh, non-staining, so I'm guessing Utah white or something, or Utah sweet. I think that's clear, uh, white, but regardless, it's it's not staining. Um, more ornamental, because there's it's in a V-cut, so if there's heavy fruit set, this thing's in a split. It's just for, for me to remember these two, that uh, one that was ex exceptionally good at fruit trees, and one was exceptionally gr good at medium height fruit pl fruiting plants berries and vegetables and stuff so yeah uh, this in front of me is a kadota fig um i pruned it like it was starting to grow as you can see like this so i pruned it right there you see that line the cut and let it grow that way this is all purple tree collards right here this is very rare for this plant to flower uh, and this much, I'm gonna step back. If 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 anybody watched my past videos, you remember how many flowers this whole plant had. The pods are growing, as you can see. So it's is it gonna grow to its like my same as mine? No, because this is a natural hybrid. This purple tree collard. It's a collard green that's edible. My son loves it. It tastes sweet, especially when it's purple. 
hence the name purple tree collard. It's three separate plants. It's how big they can get, so be careful. Um, they grow only by cuttings, true to plant by seed. You know, good luck, because I have some brassica family there. And they cross-pollinated, so who knows what this is going to turn into. Another one, another grape here. This is the flame grape, flame seedless. This one here, you can see right here. Um, I, I train it to grow like this. I want it growing over here. I'm going to do some kind of design with this tree stump, with this grape plant. In my opinion, we're in Central California, so we have all the grapes. Grape production is here. Um, so I've tasted many different varieties of grapes. This is the sweetest grape there is, in my opinion, and the sweetest raisin. Delicious variety. I started cleaning up artichoke. When you clean up artichokes, I mean, when you grow artichokes, you don't want them to just lay on the floor. You see how it's laying on the ground? Right over here, I need to pull that off. You don't cut it, you pull it from the base. Because you don't want to leave, a, like a rhubarb, you don't want to leave a little stub so water gets into the crevice and rot out the crown. You want to have it flush, or as flush as possible. When I was cleaning the artichokes, look how many when I was cleaning artichokes here, the leaves, look how many mushrooms are here. Look at this. It's insane. It keeps going. Isn't that crazy? I feel bad now because they're probably not going to make it because uh, it's in the sun now. But okay, well, they did their purpose. I'm pretty sure they they spread their seed enough or their spores. I'm going to show you something when I pull the leaf out. I, I fertilize, most of my uh, subscribers know that I, I do thick wood chip mulching uh, and fertilize with seaweed. This is how all this happened. Prior to this, this was a desert. This was desert. I have pictures to show that this was desert. Look how big my artichoke leaf is now. I, uh, I have a, I took a picture with my son. I'll probably use it for the thumbnail, but it, I, I don't know, it has to be five feet tall at least. And that's just, it could have grow, got bigger if there was more room. Is this normal? It could be, you know, but um, prior to this, I've tried to grow uh, blueberries and artichokes prior to wood chip mulching and seaweed, and they wouldn't even take, or they would die, or they would rot out, or they would dry out. They never did this. Uh, sapote, I prune it back heavily every year because I want to bush out, but... Um, I thought the frost was really hurting this plant. The hard freeze hurt it. As you can see, the leaves fell and the burn. That was the hard freeze. Okay, whatever, move on. So, but there's a lot of new growth. You can see those little nodes, those little bumps, those little buds opening, opening up. So I thought I wasn't growing. I thought I wasn't getting any, you know, I thought it was dying because I have two. I have a Subel, which looks great. And I have this Vernon. This is a V-E-R-O-N, white sapote. What was causing this problem was earwigs. I like to night. I like to garden at night, and when I came at nighttime, I saw tons of earwigs on the limbs eating the little leaves coming out. So I took care of that um, with uh, basically some soap and water and a little dish with some beer and stuff. It worked on the slug and it worked on the earwig. A lot of you know that I love my slugs and snails in my garden, but what happened is the insects starting to come inside the house, and that's when my family said enough is enough i said i'm not going to use poison so i had to look for other avenues you know if they go you know you're finding a, an earwig in the kitchen cabinet yeah it's time to do something about it okay anything in here no got hyssop over here this is anise hyssop a beautiful plant that smells like anise dry it up put it in tea makes a beautiful flower i don't know for certain but at least I'll say for my garden. In my garden, which I have a lot of plants, as you can see, the most flower flowers per square inch, I guess you could say. Um, the, it has so the flower stalks when it produces, it goes up, and then a flower like stud comes out like this, and it has thousands of flowers in that, and there's like a hundred on one plant. So it's the most flowers. If you want pollinators, anise up. Okay, got red, red or Russian kale, some uh, viola. This is orange balsam thyme, a great, great citrusy thyme. Good to add in your zatar. That's why I grew it. Uh, just add, instead of adding orange zest, I just add some of this. But you could do both. Okay, there's some more Oregon syricum. 
This is an ultra dwarf weeping Santa Rosa plum. It produces plums one month after regular Santa Rosa. There's a flavor grenade pluot right over there. The first year it's gonna fruit. Uh, black satin blueberry, uh, excuse me, blackberry. This is a goji right here. I put it in this uh, tomato cage to keep it nice and tight. Uh, that's it, kind of invasive too. You'll find that going 10 feet out and coming up. Subel Sapote. This I have tasted Vernon. And I have tasted the Subel. The Subel's white Sapote is known as the best tasting or said to be the best tasting soup, uh, Sapote. And it tastes like a very sweet banana custard. This tastes like nothing. No, don't get me wrong. It's still delicious. But it tastes like nothing. Just a very sweet custardy apple. This tastes like a custardy apple mixed with ripe bananas. It's amazing. Now, especially if you mash them up and put them in the freezer and make ice cream out of it. Oh, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Okay, don't want to miss anything. Bountiful blueberry. The these leaves are the brightest leaves of all blueberries, or the bluest, or the shiniest. I forgot how they market it, but it's you could tell that how bright they are. Uh, this is a uh, parentage is um, the sunshine blue blueberry, and there's a misty over there. You can see the small one. Okay, my I pruned it heavily because of the hard freeze. It did okay. You can still see it's nice and healthy. Um, that's to show you a late hard freeze of 27 degrees and I still have an avocado tree. It used to be about maybe four feet higher. It was like here. I pruned it down and pruned the sides to flush out more growth. 